Hey, what is up everybody? For those of you who don't know me and are new to the channel, I'm an American-based content creator for Modern Warships and possibly soon to be Modern Warfront. We'll just see how that egg cracks. Now I know carriers can be difficult. They have a lot of moving parts and just practicing without understanding them is futile. So I'm gonna help you understand them so that you can practice efficiently. The first thing on the list is the build. And what you need to understand is that there are a lot of builds. There's the nuclear build, the pan spatial build, the cheap build, the free to play build, the meta build, you get the idea. The main thing to take away is that you need to build your carrier around aircraft that work well together. So there's not just one build, it's a collection of aircraft that play well together and you need to understand how they play and play to their strengths. Next, we need to talk about spotting. And the important thing to take from it is that you need to spot as soon as possible. It is important for both you and your team's success at the end of the day. So I'm gonna dive into one of the most important things that you have to understand and learn is how the AI conduct their business up in the air while you're not looking, right? And so what you need to understand is that they will engage anything they have line of sight on. And if there's more than one target, they will then prioritize range, whichever being the closest is the priority. And this is why you'll see us throw our aircraft up in the air sometimes. It's just adjusting its line of sight and what the AI will target and prioritize. Also, your swapping needs to be intentional or with purpose. And you need to have an idea of when things are available and what their ranges are so that you can be efficient with them. Your opening and the combination of how your aircraft operate is completely unique to how you build it. For instance, a P1 and jackknife will open differently from a KBX or B21 Raider. And furthermore, a SR-71 Blackbird would need its own unique delayed deployment just because it's so fast. All right, so let's talk about some tips. We know that the AI will target ships based on line of sight, and then prioritize them by range. So if you have a guided missile in the air and you release controls over to the AI, the AI is going to target what ship? Well, I hope you guessed it right, it's the closest ship. What you might not know is that an underwater sub will be targeted by any AI. So keep that in mind if you're juggling a bunch of stuff with guided missiles and there's a sub trying to push you. It will straight up waste it in the water. Furthermore, once the AI is too close to a target, I would say in the neighborhood of two kilometers, the tracking becomes unreliable. So understand that too as you continue to approach a target. Additionally, if you find your AI breaking off and constantly returning to the carrier, it's because one of four things. You either told it to by pressing the button at the top right hand side of your screen, or it's damaged, or a member of its squadron is damaged and is going to continue to try to return to the carrier for repairs. And then among the last notes, if it is out of range or it does not have a piece of equipment on board and in stock, that is in range, it will not press the target. Here are my settings for reference. And so now that you have a better understanding as to how the AI work, you can start to adjust your opening and your gameplay to work with the AI rather than against it. Combine that with practice and some polished maneuvers like making sure that your spots turn back at the edge of the spotting range rather than continue into enemy airspace and get destroyed. This ensures that spots stay up and are more consistent for everybody. Most anti-airfields start around four kilometers and overlapping anti-airfields get much worse. So try to make efforts to avoid them. Furthermore, 
moving your aircraft up, down, left, or right, and not directly at the ship does help mitigate some anti-air damage. Mostly the ballistic anti-air, but the point to take is don't fly in a straight line at the ship and don't loiter. Now when it comes to doing damage, you have to work around not only the anti-air fields mitigating some damage, but you also have to work around the enemy's flares. And some ways of doing this is flare baiting, and the best way of doing it is doing a full equipment dump with the drone, or some aircraft have good intimidation flare bait. But the point is, is you have to navigate this step in order to deliver enough damage to make it worth it. And you will need to consider this when you put together your CV and your build. Some other ways is scavenging, watching your teammates fight and jumping in on the battles to help turn the tide, or going high enough that you're above the player's FOV and they simply can't see it, and generally the alert is lost in all of the commotion while they're fighting, and while they're not paying attention to the radar, bam. So that's also a strategy you can use. However, flying high does put you very susceptible to the anti-air missiles, which are completely broken. But at the same time, so is strike switch. So you've got anti-air missiles that are overpowered, strike switch that's overpowered, and the 36 other strike fighters we have within the game just crying a river. But that's digressing a little. Let's jump right back into another tip. And that's when you swap to an aircraft understanding the range and the lock on time of each equipment on that aircraft will help your combos look and flow more smoothly if you're trying to fire the slowest lock on missile first you can sit there and see how every other missile is waiting for the slowest one when you could have done fired half of its arsenal just because you didn't understand the aircraft so understand what locks on first and what fires fastest now go out there and start applying this and incorporating it into your routine and gameplay now that you understand it a little better, you'll start being able to get more creative. And if you need any references, I have a host of videos on my channel that you can look through and browse. Also, in my shorts, there is a long-standing series of me opening with carriers and taking somebody down within the allotted time of a short. You can reference those for ideas and direction. And if you got any inspiration from this video, be sure to leave me a like, follow me if you want, love you all.